It's on this one. Is it? Got it. We found a school of them and they can't bite fast enough. As soon as you drop a line, you get a bite. He's on there. Watch out, watch out. Woo! Wouldn't it be great if every day on the water was this good? A wonderful fishing experience, big smiles and great stories to tell, and a beautiful sunset to come home to. Well, the truth is, for many of us, days like this can be far and few between. There are going to be times when the fish just won't cooperate. No matter what you do, you can throw everything in your tackle box at them and nothing seems to work. Well, in this program, we're going to show you some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use when the fish won't bite. Well, we've all heard it at one time or another. Man, you should have been here yesterday. We filled the boat up. Or too bad you've got to leave today because they'll probably start biting tomorrow. Now that really picks your day up, doesn't it? Well, knowing when fish will bite and what they will bite is sometimes a job for fortune tellers. And you really can't count on fish to be in the same place or necessarily bite the same thing from one day to the next. But one thing that you can count on with fishing is that you can't count on anything. After all, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Most fish are opportunity feeders. That is, whenever they have the opportunity to eat, they take it. In fact, I've caught fish that have had completely full stomachs and they were still eating. After all, they probably don't know when their next meal is going to show up, so they take advantage of most every opportunity. However, you've got to figure out what it is they want to eat and how to make it enticing enough for them to eat it. And you've got to find the kitchen. I'm not fishing this place just because I just randomly came here. I tend to look on maps and charts and aerial photographs for things that tend to wall up bait that tend to catch bait, and if you'll notice behind us, there's a big point of land sticking out there with a big chunky bu bunch of rocks on it. Well, I think that that probably, in a general sense, attracts bait here. This is where the kitchen is. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is where they come to eat. Right. Uh, the... And what we're trying to do with these splashy topwater plugs, I mean, there's mullet jumping everywhere out there. We're trying to tell the predatory fish, here's an easy meal. It's not, um, I don't have to work for this. You know, this is big fish tactics. Big trout, big redfish, they don't want to go very far for their dinner. You know, as a guide, I've found that fish like permit and bonefish are highly selective. But I think that redfish, trout, tarpon, uh, in some cases, uh, flounder particularly, uh, jackfish, of course, will eat anything, are, are they feed as an opportun uh, they're opportunistic feeders. They just send, you know, they see something coming. They may even be full. You know, they've kind of got some gluttonous disease and they may say, oop, it may be a lean day tomorrow. I'm gonna go ahead and fill my belly up and eat that last mullet or that plug. So, yeah, I think that other than, I mean, most of our species on the, the northern Big Bend West Coast and on the East Coast, which are again, trout, redfish, tarpon, flounder, um, bluefish, Spanish, Spanish mackerel, uh, inshore kingfish, you get the plug in front of them, they're going to eat it. Now there's some selectivity and we've got a little bit of chop here and the chop could be affecting how fish are seeing these plugs. So my next thing to do, I haven't had much luck with this top water plug that I had luck with yesterday when the water was a little slicker and starting to blow up a little bit. I'm going to go to something that stays under the water a little bit more and see how that works. If it were slick, I'd definitely be on top water. But I always give topwater a chance. Number one, topwater is a great experience. I think the average person who doesn't fish a lot, just his first fish on a topwater plug is pretty amazing. I mean, to see a, you know, a big redfish come up and just swallow a plug, 
uh, make a big splash, trout too, a lot of head shaking going on. Uh, or a tarpon, you know, tarpon's amazing on a top water plug. Uh, we don't do much deep water fishing for them around here. They tend to be on the flats and you'll come across a school of them and get to throw at them. Uh, top water's the way to go. On any given fishing day, I start out with a, a plan I call the A plan. And it's the ideal um, way I want to do and what, what I want to uh, occur during the day. I have a, a pattern that I, I want to go, go try out, uh, try and hit uh, spots in, in a reasonable fashion where you don't have a lot of backtracking. But on days like a day where the sea conditions are very poor, uh, we've got high winds, got um, high waves, I had to drop back and do a B plan, which it wasn't turned out, didn't turn out too bad. We decided to come in where the wave conditions are more favorable. The winds are still strong, but we're tucked in between uh, two grass flats in the middle of a slough, and we're uh, trying to do a little cobia fishing. Uh, we just brought one in, or I just brought one in. Uh, it was about uh, 20, 25 pounds. Worked out pretty good. Plan B. When I'm fishing, I use a shotgun approach a lot. I'll keep a, a mackerel rig out. I'll bait a hook with a, a short wire leader and a strip of cut bait, drop it out. And it's hanging back in the current behind the boat. And every now and then a fish just swims up and bites it. But I've got an ace in the hole. The real ace in the hole is a chum churn. The chum churn is so darn good. Anybody that don't have one on the boat is probably missing the best single piece of equipment other than a darn good rod and reel that you can put on a boat. I'd Honestly, I'd rather have it than a GPS or a depth finder because with the chum churn, I can get fish to come to me rather than have to come, go to the boat, to go to the fish. Uh, that's, that's a good, it, it's a good little ace in the hole to have. You put all your, ch your leftover bait and any well, I don't think God made trash fish, but any fish that you're not going to go in the box, uh, you can put in the chum churn and chop him up. And the noise of the chum churn, the scent of the chum churn, and you get fish coming to you. This is the chum churn that I was describing in the last little blurb. It's basically a uh, sewer pipe clean out. It was a part, it looked like part of a well point almost. Maybe it was designed that way. Uh, maybe it was something that he had built for, for this particular purpose. It has a series of blades inside that you, that chop going and coming. They're diamond shaped, they're sharpened top and bottom, and as they come up and down, they slice through the bait. This particular port, you pull the, you pull the blades all the way to the top, you drop your bait fish in here. Menhaden worked great. I love Spanish sardines because when you chop them, the scales come off and the scales flicker going down. Okay, before we put the chum churn in the water, these things are fairly expensive pieces of equipment. So we always add a little safety lanyard to the top of it. The safety lanyard goes around a rail or around a cleat. Mike has got a carabiner on here and uh, it's locked in place. If you drop it or forget it, you still got it. You've got your bait, we, we've, already, we've already charged it with bait. You drop it over the side of the boat and you do this. That noise, you wouldn't believe it, but that noise is so attractive. I've had fish come to the boat long before the scent could ever get to the bottom. I mean, in, in 80 feet of water, you'll have fish swarming under it within 15 seconds and that fish Amberjacks this big, swimming all under the boat. Amberjacks and cobia, snapper come to the top, grouper come to the top. But it's the noise and the scent. And then when you when you get ready to fish, just hook it over the side of the boat and forget about it. And this sucker works. This is the it's the greatest single piece of equipment I have added to my fishing arsenal in the last five or six years. When fish won't bite, the key is be versatile. So try the methods that you've had success with in the past and then try some variations on those. And of course, by all means, enjoy yourself because any day on the water is a good day. Of course, it's not as good as yesterday or last week or tomorrow. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation from the Back to the Basics team and that you've learned a few things that you can do when the fish won't bite. Now, we always stress safety on the water and please be courteous to your fellow anglers. And remember, the fishing's always great when you get Back to the Basics.